Following the collapse of 2008, AIG was one of the companies that received a massive government bailout to prevent them from going under. But that wasn't enough for AIG's CEO, Hank Greenberg, and now he's suing the federal government for billions of dollars. Joining me now to explain how that lawsuit's working is Howard Nations. Howard, this Greenberg character in AIG, first of all, Greenberg has been in the news almost as long as I can remember with insurance hustles. In Florida, for example, you remember the big hustle where he was trying to hustle people out of insurance claims after the hurricane, for God's sakes. Yeah. And this guy has got a shady, shady background. Every, every story you look at where there's a Greenberg and AIG involved, it's, it's you go, well, okay, I, I get it. There's something wrong here. Tell me what the latest story is. It's a remarkable story. Well, the latest one is that Hank Greenberg is suing the federal government, the taxpayers, if you will, for, uh, for $40 billion as a result of the $182 billion bailout of AIG, claiming that that bailout to AIG, which saved the company, was unfair to AIG. Let me give you the background on it, Pap. Uh, during the credit boom, AIG insured a lot of financial instruments of the Wall Street robber barons, Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and so forth. And they just skipped the basic premise of insurance, that is to keep reserves in case of claims. So they failed to reserve, and in 2008... Well, well let, me, let me stop you right there. Yeah. Most of the, what happens when a, a company says they can cover something, right. like an insurance claim for a, a hurricane disaster, they're supposed to put money back to cover it, right? I that's mean, that's exactly what, right. that, is the, that is the basic parameter for what an insurance company is required to do. Insurance commissions all over, the, all over the country require unhypothecated funds to be held back to pay claims. Okay, so take it from there. All right, so in 2008, AIG joined the financial services death spiral. They had billions of dollars in losses by their insureds, but they couldn't pay those claims because they hadn't reserved adequately. They had their credit rating cut, they couldn't raise money, and AIG was func functionally bankrupt. Their stock value dropped to $5.7 billion, and Bernanke says that they were days away from failure. He also yeah, I said saw. That, okay, let me let me see that. I mean, I saw Daily Beast. You're, it's, yeah. I saw the same story covered in Daily Beast, and that Bernanke, that Bernanke um, uh, scenario, where Bernanke is saying, were these people basically saying, are they brain dead? Don't they say they're going bankrupt? Don't they see they're going bankrupt? What is it that they don't understand? And, and uh, well, how how bad a shape were they in? Well. He testified. This trial is ongoing right now, Pap. It's going in, in D.C. right now. And Bernanke testified that AIG was disconnected from reality. They thought it was a temporary problem when, in fact, they were days away from failing. But they decided that AIG was the classic case of too big to fail because bankruptcy requires a write-down of losses by all sorts of major corporations, because most of the world's financial institutions were doing business with AIG. The write-offs during the crisis, uh, in effect, would have been if AIG collapses, the economy collapses. So the Fed came up with a solution. They bailed out AIG, taxpayer money they paid them, uh, that were paid to the companies that they were, were their insureds, like Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and others. They paid off the claims that they made against, against AIG. And then what was it? Uh, 180, also, 180 billion dollars. 182 billion dollars, and in, in exchange, the Fed demanded interest at 14 percent, less than bank credit cards, 80 uh, percent ownership of AIG. So here's what they did: 182 billion dollar bailout, which was secured by 4.7 billion dollars worth of stock. Real ripoff, huh? And now these <laughs> are the terms that Greenberg is suing over. Uh, the Fed basically saved AIG. But, and Greenberg suing him for it. What, what is it? What is Greenberg? First of all, uh, you know, our friend and associate uh, David Boys, of all people, is defending, yeah. is actually going forward with this lawsuit. God, I hope David's being paid a lot of money by Greenberg. But what is Greenberg actually saying? The government did wrong by saving, by taking ta your money, my money, taxpayer money, and saving the company that was so corrupt and so incompetent that they were on the verge of bankruptcy. What is, what, what, what is the argument David Boies or, uh, or Greenberg would be able to make here? Well, the argument they're making is that 
the, the bailout worked. AIG has lots of assets now. They took $182 billion in taxpayer money. They put it into the company, and by 2012, the company had rebounded. They had paid the interest and principal, and in fact, they had paid $23 billion profit to the taxpayers. So, Good. Good. yeah, yeah. So, so now that everything's see, Greenberg was removed from AIG in 2005 by uh, with a fraud case by Elliot Spitzer, where they had to pay 1.6 billion in a civil settlement. But now that everything is going fine uh, for AIG, then he comes back. He's still a major shareholder. He comes back now and he says, "Okay, you should turn that money over to the shareholders, specifically to me." So he's got a $40 billion frivolous lawsuit, and he's got David Boies, who was the attorney for Gore when the Supreme Court appointed Bush president. Uh, he's got him representing him. David's a great lawyer. But this here's an interesting thing about this. This is not the first Robert Barron lawsuit. This is one of more than 20 of this type of lawsuits been filed, Pap. Uh, the, the the Freddie Mac and uh, uh, Freddie May. In other words, let, let me stop you right there. Yeah. The, the, the robber baron lawsuit is all of these thugs who would have gone bankrupt just like any other mom and pop right. operation. They were incompetent. They were criminal. They were stupid in every regard. They ran their company into the ground. Uh, you know, and, and, and then we come along as taxpayers and say, oh, now you're different. You're different than a mom and pop operation, so we're going to make sure we can cover your incompetence. So now these same incompetent robber baron thugs are going back to court, like Greenberg. You say there's more of them besides Greenberg. There are. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce robber baron theory on this is that taxpayers should provide guaranteed profits. They should ignore manipulation of the markets to ensure those profits. The richest 1% are entitled to unlimited financial privilege in, ex in exchange for heavy political contributions. But when the robber baron policies create economic chaos, as they did, the taxpayers should cover their losses. And when the economy recovers, taxpayers should transfer the profits to the robber barons after a successful bailout. And you're One saying Freddie, thing, Freddie, Freddie, May and, uh, Freddie Fannie Mac May. and Fannie Mae did right. the same thing. Yes, in 2008, there was a uh, there was a complete collapse. They recklessly incurred a hundred billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of mortgage debt. They also were on the verge of bankruptcy. They were too big to fail, and they because the banks owned the robber barons owned hundreds of billions of dollars of their bonds. Uh, so the taxpayer bailed them out. They put them into conservatorship. Uh, they were taken over by the Federal Housing Finance Agency and the taxpayers paid $188 billion for them. In exchange, uh, they issued preferred stock to Treasury at 10% dividend, but they, even, they were on the verge of default in 2012, so uh, Treasury went in and said, okay, from now on, you're paying all your profits to Treasury. Uh, the, the market, the housing market recovered, and they made profit to date, They've paid $218 billion on $188 billion worth of loans. So now that it's all flourishing and they're profitable, these uh, hedge fund managers went out and bought the uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac stock. Now they file suit. They're contending the government should turn over ownership to them, but, but the government should continue to guarantee the debts. <laughs> now, here, now here, did, this, did is, this is important. On October 1st, the same day the AIG trial began, Judge Royce Lambert, who's a Reagan appointee, dismissed that Freddie Mac, uh, Fannie Mae lawsuit on summary judgment. No jury dismissed it as a matter of law. Well, okay, so that's something that should be happening. As I listen, I don't see a lot of distinction here in the Greenberg, uh, the big, the big Greenberg lie here. But what I find so, what I find so amazing as as I read this story. Think of all the publicity that the McDonald's coffee cup, hot coffee, think of all the publicity that got, uh, which was a drop in the bucket. Here we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars being hustled from the American taxpayer, and the same criminals are coming back to the, to the well now saying, you gave us hundreds of billions of dollars to save us from our own incompetent ignorance. Now we want you to give us more money. And that's barely a story. 
But nevertheless, we talked about the McDonald's hot coffee cup case forever, as if this is going to change the economics of America. What's your take on that? Well, my take is that these are exactly the same people. The Chamber of Commerce, the Robert Barons, and majorly the insurance companies, of which uh, Greenberg was one of the biggest tort reformers there were that, that led the charge on tort reform. And these are the same people who slammed the courthouse door on personal injury and wrongful death victims. And now they, they were screaming for tort reform. They got it activated by their legislative lapdogs. And now they own the court system. They've got it exactly where they want it. Their idea was to keep the courts available only for business litigation. So now they're filing these lawsuits. Uh, so if you're a multi-billionaire uh, and you can, the Chamber of Commerce strategy require feds to turn over public assets to private investors without any leg legitimate basis, litigation costs are nominal when you're a multi-billionaire, so why not take a shot? Yeah, you're not seeing these stories in the big, I'm telling you, you're not seeing these stories in newspapers and in the big magazines. I love the quote that came from the Daily Beast. It was, this is a story that was really well done in the, da in the Daily Beast. And he said what Hank Greenberg is doing is, is it's, like, uh, it's like a man dying of thirst in the desert, and he's <laughs> suing the guy who rescued him because the, the, he was served tap water rather than Evian. And that's, that is just <laughs> about the attitude of this gray poupon crowd that continues to hustle American taxpayers for every dime they can get while the Justice Department does nothing. Howard, thank you for joining me, okay? My pleasure, Pat.